Hey, I've spent more than four years in my career working in the Canadian nuclear energy industry. And during this time, I've seen a few skills that have really helped me progress in my own career journey. But also I've noticed others that have utilized these skills and really fast tracked their trajectories in their careers. I've also seen a majority of people early in their careers really undervalue development of these skills. So if you're early in your career or a nuclear professional simply looking to get established in the industry, these are the top three undervalued skills for nuclear professionals. And the three skills are number one, diversifying your strengths. Number two, harnessing the power of your network. And yes, the nuclear energy network in Canada is very strong. And I'll teach you some tips into how to tap into that network strategically. And number three is getting leadership experience through volunteering your time in the nuclear community and also being active in different community organizations. Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering and on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. I also like to give a little bit of tips and tricks as to things that helped me succeed in my career and skills that I'm still developing to this day. Let's jump in to this video. The first skill is diversifying your strengths and expanding your career portfolio and doing it early. I find that there's a lot of folks that go into the nuclear energy industry, a lot of professionals that start off maybe early on in their co-ops and start working at the same company as a full-time after they graduate. And they're doing the same job for let's say five to seven years. And they realize that, oh wow, I wanna try something different. I want to try something new. I wanna go maybe try project management or maybe design engineering, or I want to work in the field for a mega project. And what happens is since they've specialized their experiences to such a level, it's difficult to really jump out of those roles and explore something new. Diversifying your career portfolio and doing it early can help you be a little bit more flexible and gain the confidence of hiring managers. You know, you're coming to the table and showing that, hey, listen, I have experiences both in project management, design engineering, and also maybe community outreach or vendor interface, supply chain procurement, and I can do et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So building upon those experiences, but starting off with early on in your career trying out different things. There is a light of hope if you're in that position because the nuclear energy industry has a lot of different positions catered toward different skill sets. You know, you can really leverage your career opportunities going to various opportunities such as you can try a communications role. You can try project management. You could try something like cost and schedule analyst. You can try something completely different from your original career. So I've seen engineers go into different roles or communicators transition into project management roles. I've seen it all and I've seen it happen. So don't be upset if you are in this position. So if you are an early nuclear professional, what I would recommend is really starting off with the intention of diversifying your portfolio with the intention of trying out new things and really discovering what you like. So that's really the approach that I took when I entered the industry. I'm like, hey, listen, I want to try a bit of everything and then really find what I'm passionate about in terms of work passion, because you may have passions outside of work, but also passions inside of the workplace. Another really good approach is to apply to rotation programs. So I know a lot of vendors, a lot of utilities have rotation programs where you rotate between different groups uh, when you first join that company. And this is also a really great initiative because, you know, you can get a chance to work with different groups, uh, different departments, see what you like, see what type of personalities you resonate with, but also get a flavor of the different working groups as well. For me personally, what I did in my undergrad was I jumped into a role right after second year. I was lucky enough to get a co-op or internship very early, right after my second year, which is kind of rare. And then you know, I could have easily finished the rest of my degree, right? Finished the rest of those two more years that I had left, but I wanted to really get those experiences under my belt, right? So instead of finishing up my school, I finished my third year of the nuclear engineering program and then jumped into another role, right? Which was with the utility. And then again, instead of extending that co-op, I jumped into another role with a vendor. So I got a chance to work with three different companies. I got a chance to work at a nuclear utility for a mega project, and then also two different vendors doing completely different things. So that's basically the approach I took and I don't regret it. It not only helped me develop my technical acumen and technical skills, but also my soft skills, right? Like project management and working with different programs, different softwares, and also and more importantly, expanding my network in the industry, which leads me on to the second skill that is very, very important to build. And the second skill is harnessing the power of the nuclear network. Now, like I said before, the Canadian nuclear energy industry is a very small core group, right? It's not very small, it's quite large, but at the end of the day, everyone knows everyone in the industry. And this is a good 
good thing, but it could also be a double-edged sword. I'll explain a little bit more as to why later on. However, tapping into your network, the people that you know, is really important because your network can help you really be a source of mentorship and guidance. It can also be an area where you can approach and really bounce ideas off of and really fast track in your career in that sense. Also, you can help understand and observe industry trends and leverage that to help you in your own career. And lastly, expanding your career potential to the maximum. At the end of the day, it's all about relationship building. And my recommendation is really start off by putting yourself out there, get active in the nuclear community, go to conferences in person, honestly, is the best. Go shake some hands, meet people, build those relationships. You want to come across from an area of giving. It's kind of like what I'm doing on this channel. So in terms of building relationships, it's very difficult. It's not easy. You have to maintain those relationships. You have to foster them with care. And it's not something that we're really taught in school. Even engaging in the first place and initiating uh, that relationship building is very difficult. So from my perspective, what I would recommend a really good resource is a book. You know, it's a cliche at this point, but it is an incredible asset that really helped me. It's called How to Win Friends and Influence People. I'm, I'm still referring back to this book till this day. And it's such an important book because it helps you, you know, Dale Carnegie, he breaks down the basics of how to network, how to build relationships and effectively, you know, win friends and influence people. Reading that book not only helped me build skills for professional development and career growth, but also harnessing my relationships and refining them within my own family and friends. So I think that's just an important part of life relationships. And if you master building them, you will be very successful. However, absorbing theoretical knowledge is a lot more easy as opposed to applying these principles. So to apply these principles, what I recommend is some great conferences in the nuclear energy industry. I know the CNA, Canadian Nuclear Association Conference has been being held for decades on end. It's a really, really good event. It takes place every year in Ottawa in the Western Hotel. So it happens around February time. So I recommend signing up for that one. It's great. You see leadership from across the energy industry come together. You have CEOs there. You have executives in the industry. You have leaders, young leaders as well. And you can really approach them, get to know them. So definitely sign up for that conference. Uh, the second one is CNS, Canadian Nuclear Society, which is incredible for technical presentations, you know, learning a lot about the technological trends and meeting experts in the industry. So those are two conferences that I would recommend checking out. You can find them in the links below. Reflecting back to the jobs that I've had the chance of getting in the industry, it was all through networking, except my first co-op or internship, which I was lucky getting. The others were all based on networking and really organically things that, you know, opportunities that came my way, but also I took advantage of those opportunities. You know, for example, my third internship just came across uh, an ex-executive from, you know, EDF, Energy de France. And after talking with him a little bit, he had an opportunity, but the opportunity aligned with my experiences because I had experiences in valves and he also was developing developing a bit of a valve training facility. So we connected and right away built that relationship. I had my elevator pitch ready. And what took place was, you know, this opportunity was, you know, in the Bruce area, right? I always wanted to travel there and check out that area, live there for a summer. So it was an incredible opportunity for me to not only change up my location, get an idea of, you know, different culture in a sense, different location, uh, you know, summers are beautiful up there and also leverage this network that I started to build. I got a lot of mentorship from this individual who was such an incredible boss that I had up there. So that, that's an example that I can give. So the next skill is gaining leadership experience and volunteering in your free time. So I know how important your free time is to you. You're probably watching Netflix, scrolling on Instagram and Twitter, right? But free time is incredible for trying out different leadership positions. So there's different groups in the nuclear energy industry that are volunteer run. And each of these groups have positions that open up every year, a wealth of different positions, whether it be a marketing director or VP finance, so honestly, these are great organizations to spend the extra time outside of work. And the reason why is because you get a chance to meet incredible people, incredibly driven individuals from across the industry with diverse backgrounds. And in that process, you don't have to put as much time into going out of your way to network. You are already part of that network. There's multiple advantages. Uh, secondly is it's honestly your intention. I would say joining these groups with the intention of really developing those skills, contributing, and making an impact is something that's amazing. However, coming in with an intention of taking up one of these roles and not really doing anything is not really good. Remember, this is a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, you're building a bit of a reputation in the industry. You don't wanna be known for someone who's simply taking up a position just to put it on your resume. You won't benefit, the organization will not benefit, and you're honestly developing your own personal brand in that sense, right? So it is a bit of a double-edged sword. Make sure when you join these groups, you dedicate that time and energy appropriately. Also, what I would say is this is a great chance to experiment with different leadership styles, right? Everyone has a different leadership style. And 
And I think the best place to start is one of these groups. You could really, you know, try out new things, see what works for you and really contribute to that self-discovery in that sense. The next is surrounding yourself with driven people. So I think honestly, the people you surround yourself with, you become like them. And what I've been so lucky to have is in these groups, just being surrounded by positive driven individuals, which make a really positive difference in your lifestyle and your approach to life, right? So that's just another benefit of gaining those leadership experiences. The last benefit is adding that creative spark. You know, the day-to-day -day grind of doing the same tasks every single day in your workplace, it can get sometimes get dull and boring. So you kind of want to mix it up a bit and, you know, experiment, have that creative element, whether it be uh, planning events or it be, I don't know, like any side projects or initiatives that you're passionate about. So that's for myself, a lot of these uh, leadership experiences that I gained became that almost like a creative element or creative outlet for myself. So in terms of professional organizations that I would recommend would be North American Young Generation of Nuclear or NAYGN. If you're not in North America, there's a lot of other organizations across the world like the IYNC, International Youth Generation of Nuclear. Uh, I'm actually headed off to their conference in a week or so, but a lot of countries across the world have their own Young Generation Nuclear networks. So tap into those networks, figure out what value can I provide to those networks and uh, vice versa, right? What opportunities are out there? Also other organizations like Women in Nuclear, right? Women in Nuclear Global and also other Women in Nuclear chapters across the world. And lastly, CNS, so Canadian Nuclear Society. There's also ANS, American Nuclear Society, and similarly other nuclear societies across the world as well, which are more technically oriented and really making an impact in, in terms of research, in terms of, you know, research studies, technical development of different technologies, hosting, you know, different events. Incredible. Overall, these are the top three skills that I would recommend that are undervalued, but can really give you that strategic edge as a nuclear professional in the industry. However, if you are interested in learning more about interview tips, here are my top interview tips video, which I really recommend. And also the ultimate guide for internships in the nuclear energy industry. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Take care. Till then. Bye.